In classical thermodynamics, to understand about the concept of entropy, you need to understand all the basis concept that first and second law provide. For that, you need to climb the ladder, understand their role and move on. Okay. So let's climb the first step and start from the first law. Well, I have already described about first law of thermodynamics. It is just an energy balance applied when heat comes into play with a closed system. Please watch if you haven't already. The second law is also described already. But I haven't talked about the analytical form of the Calvin Planck statement of second law. Well, these statement imposes a constraint. I should have teach you about this analytical form on previous chapter. It would be difficult to understand about entropy, if we do not talk about these analytical form now. These inequality is developed due to second law. According to the Calvin Planck statement, a system undergoing a cycle, while communicating thermally with a single reservoir, cannot deliver a net amount of work, to its surroundings. So, for this device which is undergoing thermodynamic cycle process, and is getting heat from a single reservoir, the work done should be either zero, or negative. The total work done would be zero if the process is internal reversible or the total work done would be negative if irreversibilities exist. But total work done during cyclic process, would never be positive quantity. That's the constraint given by second law. Here, the single reservoir are added to emphasize that the system communicates thermally only with a single reservoir as it executes the cycle. You can visualize this inequality using this device. During the first half cycle, it gets heat from single reservoir and expense and work is done by the piston against atmospheric air pressure. So work is done by the system. But in order to complete the cycle, the atmospheric pressure must pull the piston downward and it is negative work done, as work is done on the system by atmospheric pressure. If this device is internal reversible, then the magnitude of work done by the system equals the work done on the system. So the total work done during cyclic process would be zero. But, if the process is irreversible, then according to second law, total work done during cyclic process must be negative. So in this case the work done by atmospheric pressure should be greater, then the work done by our system, if our system undergoes cyclic process. That's it! If you understand how to use this inequality and second law, then we are good to climb the next step. Reversible and irreversible process. I have already described them on Carnot cycle. Also take a look at my quasi-equilibrium chapter. There notice how these finite and infinite temperature change creates internal reversible and irreversible process. The quasi-equilibrium process is an example of internally reversible process. So, be sure to check them out. Taking the next step is the Carnot cycle and Kelvin scale. First, be sure to watch the Carnot cycle video of mine. The thermal efficiency of Carnot cycle is used to describe the Kelvin scale. Kelvin proposed that the ratio of temperature to be equal to the magnitude of ratio of quantities of heat absorbed and rejected. 
This equation is valid on reversible process only. So, when cycles are reversible, and only then, the ratio of the heat transfers equals the ratio of temperatures on the Kelvin scale, where Th is the temperature of the hot reservoir and Tc is the temperature of the cold reservoir. This equation is proved only after you finish your Carnot cycle lecture. I have omitted the proof now. For now just understand how this ratio works for reversible process. These ratio is valid for any heat engine, refrigeration or heat pump cycle, that exchange energy by heat transfer with hot and cold reservoirs. Also note that, this equation is not valid for temperatures in degrees Celsius or degree Fahrenheit. Only use the temperature on Kelvin's scale. Okay, now we have developed two important mathematical tools, which help us, to further derive and develop, Clausius inequality. Notice. The ratio of heat transfer and temperature here, it is somewhat related from the equation of Kelvin's scale. Also the inequality here, seems to be derived from the analytical form of the Kelvin-Planck statement. So, let's take a look how this Clausius statement is derived, from these two basic tools. To demonstrate the validity of Clausius inequality, we again take our old cyclic system. It needs heat to operate. Let's consider another cyclic system or device. But this device is reversible. Reversible means, total work done during cyclic process must be zero. This reversible device gets some heat from the thermal energy reservoir, which always remains a constant positive absolute temperature. So, our reversible device operates cyclic, by receiving some heat from constant energy reservoir, and then rejecting some heat to surrounding. Now let's use this rejected, heat to operate our old system. This system can be reversible or irreversible. You can assume anything for now. So, our system does some work, as a result of heat transfer. The reversible device, takes heat from energy reservoir and rejects heat to sink. In this case our sink is, our old system. Now, from the definition of the Kelvin scale, we have the following relationship between the heat transfers and temperatures, for the reversible device. Apply them. Now, consider next the combined system shown by the dotted line. We combine our old system plus the reversible device to create new system. If we apply first law energy balance for combined system, then where combined work done is, work done by reversible process plus the work done by our old system. Now, eliminate the received heat from both equation and solve. From two preceding relations it yields. We now let the old system undergo one complete cycle while the cyclic reversible device can undergoes an integral number of cycles. Then the preceding relation becomes. But, for cyclic process, change in energy is zero. Also, we already know that work done for cyclic reversible process is zero and irreversible process is negative. So if we consider our old system as irreversible process, 
then it would be a negative quantity. Which means, total work done will also be negative quantity. So total work done can be negative or zero. Temperature of energy reservoir would never be negative. So, in order to balance this equation it follows that this closed integral must be negative or zero. It appears that the combined system is exchanging heat with a single thermal energy reservoir while involving work during a cycle. On the basis of the Kelvin-Planck statement of the second law, which states that no system can produce a net amount of work while operating in a cycle and exchanging heat with a single thermal energy reservoir, we reason that work for combined cycle cannot be a work output and thus it cannot be a positive quantity. Considering that the thermodynamic temperature a positive quantity, we must have this ratio a negative quantity or zero. Also, we already know that work done for cyclic reversible process is zero and irreversible process is negative. So if we consider our old system as irreversible process, then it would be a negative quantity. Which means, total work done will also be negative quantity. So total work done can be negative or zero. Temperature of energy reservoir would never be negative. So, in order to balance this equation it follows that this closed integral must be negative or zero. This is the Clausius inequality. This inequality is valid for all thermodynamic cycles, reversible or irreversible, including the refrigeration cycles. Here, DQ represents the heat transfer at a part of the system boundary during a portion of the cycle, and T is the absolute temperature at that part of the boundary. The integral is to be performed over all parts of the boundary and over the entire cycle. The equality applies when there are no internal irreversibilities as the system executes the cycle and the inequality applies when internal irreversibilities are present. So, if the closed integral is zero, no irreversibilities present within the system. If it is negative then, irreversibilities present within the system. And becoming positive quantity is impossible. To develop a relation for the definition of entropy, let us examine Clausius inequality for internal reversible process more closely. Here, we have a quantity whose cyclic integral is zero. Let us think for a moment what kinds of quantities can have this characteristic. We know that the cyclic integral of work is not zero. Neither is the cyclic integral of heat. But what about volume? Now consider the volume occupied by a gas in a piston cylinder device undergoing a cycle. When the piston returns to its initial position at the end of a cycle, the volume of the gas also returns to its initial value. Thus, the net change in volume during a cycle is zero. The same goes for change in internal energy. That is, the cyclic integral of volume or any other property is zero. Conversely, a quantity whose cyclic integral is zero depends on the state only and not the process path, and thus it is a property. Therefore, the quantity on Clausius statement must represent a property in the differential form, as its cyclic integral is zero.
Clausius realized, in 1865, that he had discovered a new thermodynamic property, and he chose to name this property entropy. It is designated S, and is defined as Entropy is an extensive property of a system and sometimes is referred to as total entropy. The entropy change of a system during a process can be determined by integrating this differential equation between the initial and the final states. Notice that we have actually defined the change in entropy, instead of entropy itself, just as we defined the change in internal energy, instead of the energy itself, when we developed the first law relation. Absolute values of entropy are determined on the basis of the third law of thermodynamics, which I shall discuss later in other video. Engineers are usually concerned with the changes in entropy. To perform the integration in this equation, one needs to know the relation between heat and temperature during a process. This relation is often not available, and the integral in equation can be performed for a few cases only. For the majority of cases we have to rely on tabulated data for entropy. Note that, entropy is a property, and like all other properties, it has fixed values at fixed states. Therefore, the entropy change between two specified states is the same no matter what path, reversible or irreversible is followed during a process. Also note that the integral of this equation gives us the value of entropy change only if the integration is carried out along an internally reversible path between the two states. The integral of it along an irreversible path is not a property, and in general, Different values will be obtained when the integration is carried out along different irreversible paths. Therefore, even for irreversible processes, the entropy change should be determined by carrying out this integration along some convenient imaginary internally reversible path between the specified states.